Welcome to the Word of God. I'm so glad that you are hungry for the Word of God, your spiritual food, and I will do my best to teach you what God wants to speak to you. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 16, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. I believe that you will eat the spiritual food in this teaching and you shall be healthy, strong, healed, prosperous, and blessed in the name of Jesus. I will see you in the teaching. This teaching today is in a series called Love Brings Victory. Love Brings Victory. I'm not sure what number is this. Maybe number four, number five. My brother and sister, how many people want to have victory in life? Raise your hand up. How many people want to be prosperous, full of honor, live a long life? How many people want to have a lot of favor from God, the power from God, success? Wow, I don't need to do brain transplant on you. I like to learn from the life of people in the Bible. Bad things, we don't want to follow. Good thing, we learn a spiritual lesson. We learn from Joseph, from Ruth. I like the story of Ruth so much. Ruth, she's a woman who really loved God. She lost her husband. But Ruth told Naomi, her mother-in-law, that I'm going to follow you to Bethlehem, to seek your God. And later on, Ruth, who is a foreigner, not even a Jew, became the ancestor of Jesus Christ. So, young man in this church, make sure you look for a woman like Ruth who seek God, who fear God, and who want to serve God. Amen? Don't look for just beauty, but look for the heart like Ruth. We learn lesson from the Bible here from different people, from David, from Joseph, from Abraham, from Paul, from Peter, from Jesus Christ. The greatest commandments in the Bible are two of them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit. And love the Lord and, and love other people as yourself. If you conclude the whole Bible, you can conclude only two principles, two laws. Love God, love people around you. So love brings victory, healing, success to you. Because the Bible promises in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and chapter 28, when you obey the commandment of the Lord, which means love, you shall be successful. The Lord can heal your sickness and you shall see the victory in your life. King David was that kind of man. Now I am in the series that talk about King David loved the Lord so much. And after I finish this one, I'm going to talk about King David love people too. Love God. I love people. So this is a big series. Learn about love from King David. King David loved God so much. In the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 22, after removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him. I have found David. I hope that we can put our name in there. I have found Da. I have found uh, Ten. I have found David. Huan. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Why God called David a man after his own heart? He will do. So please don't listen to the wrong teaching in the world to say that you are saved by grace, you don't need to do anything. He will do everything I want him to do. So King David really loved God. God said turn right, he turned right. God said to left, he turned left. He obeyed God 100% of the time. He really loved God so much that he obeyed God. Jesus said in the book of John that if you love me, you obey my commands. The manifestation of loving God is obedience. King David loved God so much. And look at the outcome of his heart here. A man after God's own heart. Let everyone say, I want to be a Christian, after God's own heart. I'm going to read many scriptures today. 
So be patient with me. First Chronicle eleven nine, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. How many people want to be more powerful? You want God to be with you? First Chronicle fourteen seventeen. So David's fame spread throughout every land. And the Lord make all the nations fear Him. How many people have, want to have good reputation in your company, in the society? Okay, God give him good reputation. First Chronicle eighteen six. He put garrison in the Aramean kingdom of Damascus, and the Aramean became subject to him. He mean David, and brought tribute. The Lord gave David victory. Everywhere, not somewhere. Everywhere he went. How many people want to have victory everywhere you go? I want to have victory. First Chronicle twenty nine twenty eight. He died at a young age. No, he died at a good old age. Having this going to happen to members of New Hope International Church, having enjoyed long life, not having suffered, having enjoyed long life, wealth and honor, his son Solomon succeeded him as king. How many people want to live a good long life? How many people want to enjoy life? How many people want to die with wealth and honor? Wow. What you need to do, you need to be a person after God's own heart. John chapter fifteen verse seven say, "If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you." You have close relationship with God. You love God so much. Whatever God calls you to do, you do it. You love people around you. And God say, when you do that, whatever you ask, whatever you wish, it will be given to you. God gonna answer your prayer. Your relationship with God, that faith and love for God, is so important for your future, for your success, for your victory, for honor, for reputation, for your health, your also long life. God is the one who provide all this to King David. In the past lesson. We learn that David sought God with all his heart. I'm not gonna go back there. Please listen to the original lesson in this series called "Love Brings Victory." David relied on God, and he trusts God. He obey God. He fear God. He has confidence in God. Today we're gonna learn more story about David. He responded to God. Everyone say response. Do you respond to God, or are you stubborn, stiff-necked, and disobedient? When God speaks to you, will you respond? Let me read the story and explain the story to you. I'm going to read a lot of scripture today and explain the story. Second Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Actually, the whole chapter is a story of King David, but to save time, I read only six verses. It happened in the spring of the year. At the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab. Joab was his commander, and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. David did not go out for the battle; he stayed home. Then it happened one evening. That David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, "Is it not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite?" Then David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity. In other words, she just finished her menstrual period, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived; she got pregnant, and so she sent and told David. 
and said, "I am with child." Then David sent to Joab, saying, "Send me Uriah the Hittite." And Joab sent Uriah to David. Let's first look at the first picture. The picture of David was on the balcony, watching Bathsheba taking a bath. Okay, let me tell you this story. Actually, King David was a man after God's own heart, but David was not perfect. He make mistake. I make mistake too, maybe in a different way. But we all make mistake. David, he was so free of work, so he was walking on the balcony, and he looked at the woman taking a bath, and his flesh, his lust came up, and took the woman in. Slept with her, and she got pregnant. One time, she got pregnant. David committed adultery; he sinned against God at that time. But one sin led to another sin. You need to understand: one sin can lead to another sin if you don't repent. He planned. He lied. Now he asked for. His, uh, for her husband to come in, Uriah, and say, "Hey, you don't need to go to the war anymore. You go back home and stay with your wife." In other words, he tried to say that sleep with your wife so that that baby will be yours, not mine. If she, the Tommy start to get bigger, oh, that's my kid. So he lied. He want to avoid responsibility of that kid. But what happened? Uriah did not go home. He tried to send him home two times, but Uriah did not go home both times. King David start to get nervous. Wow, he did not go back home to sleep with his wife. What I gonna do? Now the next sin come up, the sin of adultery, the sin of lie, the sin of cheating. Next, the sin of murder. He called Joab in. If you continue to read this one, the story, he called Joab in and say. Joab sent Uriah, the husband, to the frontier of the battle, and let him be killed. He said that word: "Let him be killed by the enemy." Wow! He plot to destroy a man, the husband of this woman. Now, so Uriah went to the front field of the battle, in front of the uh, city. And the archer hit him with the arrow, and he died in the battlefield. Look at the next picture. Uriah was killed in the battlefield, but who was responsible for this death? David. David planned for him to be killed. Sin after sin after sin. David make big mistakes. Look at Second Samuel chapter 12 verse 13. Then David said to Nathan, "What happened? Nathan, the prophet, came to David. Hey, David, God gave you everything. God gave you the position of a king, anointing, the presence of God, victory. A lot of people follow you. Why you still steal the wife of another man and killed him?" Nathan corrected David and said, "This is wrong." You should not have done this at all. And look at what Nathan say. Then David said to Nathan, "I have sinned against the Lord." Nathan replied, "The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. Sin leads to death. Sin leads to destruction." Wow! This sermon, everyone's so quiet now. Wow, well, Pastor, you talk about sin, you talk about death. Oh, this is not a fun story, but you need to hear it. You need to hear the truth. Sin lead to another sin, lead to another sin, and eventually, if you keep sinning and you don't repent, you will die. But because David responded to the warning of the Lord, to the correction of the Lord, immediately he did not say to Nathan, "Let me pray for one year." What I should do with this? He did not say, uh, "No, this is not a big deal to commit adultery, to kill a man like that." 
Immediately he repented. God, I am sorry. He repented quickly. He responded to the word of God right away. He did not give excuses. He did not quote the grace of God. God, give grace to me so I can sin more. He repented right away. And by the mercy of God, he did not die. But what happened if you continue to read 2 Samuel chapter 12, the son that was born of Bathsheba, that son, she got pregnant, that son died. Even though he fasted and prayed. So he lost something. You can see in this story that if you love God, yes, do we make mistakes? Do we make wrong decisions? Do we move in the wrong way? Yes, I have done that. I have done mistakes in my life. I have re rebelled against God sometimes. But once God warned me, either from the scripture, from the teaching, or from my wife, my wife likes to warn me a lot, actually. <laughs> she shook her head. <laughs> I have a godly wife. She always, huh, honey, honey, don't do this. Okay, okay, la, okay, la. I repent. Sometimes you don't see your own mistake. Somebody else see it. So husband and wife, you should warn each other. Don't agree with the sin of your husband or your wife. You warn each other. Hey, this is wrong. Repent right now. God put you together to help one another, not to go together in sin and destroy the whole house. You need to warn each other. You repent of your sin as soon as possible when you love God. Let me read another story. Everyone say, repent quickly. Second Samuel chapter 24, verses 1 to 4. I'm going to show you two stories here of King David. Again, the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. I don't want God to be angry with me or angry with New Hope International Church. Oh, I'm so careful. I don't want God to be angry with us. And he moved David against them to say, he allowed David to make a wrong choice. Go, number Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab, the commander of the army, who was with him, Now go throughout all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and count the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said to the king, Now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times, more than they are now. And may the eyes of the Lord, the king, see it. But why does my Lord, the king, desire this thing? Joab was a godly man. He warned the king. King David, don't do this, please. The Lord can bless you more. The Lord can add 100 times more into your army. You can be more powerful. But don't sin against God. Joab warned David that he is sinning against God. I'm going to explain to you why it's sin to do this uh, census. Nevertheless, verse 4, the king's word prevail a win against Joab and against the captains of the army. Therefore, Joab and the captains of the army went out from the presence of the king, King David, to count the people of Israel. I learned this story a long time ago. Sometimes people ask me, Pastor Lau, how many churches in Thailand that follow you? I say, I don't know. And I don't care to know. Sometimes people ask, how many people come to your church? I don't know. I don't need to know. My job is to look at God and do whatever He tells me to do. I'm not going to seek number. I'm not going to try to look for success by counting the number. Okay, look at verse 9 to 17. Then Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to the king, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men, only men, okay, who drew the sword. And the men of Judah, Israel, 800,000. Judah were 500,000 men. And David's heart condemned him. Now he got convicted. Condemned him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. David repented quickly. He's sensitive to sin. He don't play game with sin. 
when he realized the conviction came to his heart that, wow, who I sinned against God to count the number here. He said right away, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now I pray, O oh Lord, take away the iniquity. The word iniquity in the Hebrew language means sin and the consequences of sin. One word means two things. You sin and you have the consequence of sin. Is that very fun sermon? I don't see you smile that much. Pastor, why don't you talk about being rich? God love me. Uh, God will bless my business. Oh, God will take care of me. Why don't you preach about those? Why don't you talk about iniquity and sin? The iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Now when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God. This is another prophet. David seer. David prophet, saying, go and tell David, thus say the Lord, I offer you three things, choose one of them for yourself, that I may do it to you. God going to punish him now. So God came to David and told him, and he said to him, shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or shall you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? So in other words, He's going to be defeated by the enemies, the other kingdoms, for three months. Seven years of famine or three months of losing the battle, losing in the war. Or shall there be three days plague? Compared to today is COVID-19. Plague means pandemic, the infection all over the place, in your land. Now consider and see what answer I should take back to him who sent me. And David said to God, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord for his mercy are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So he did not choose the first two. Plague, uh, no, the first two, famine, and the enemy killed the children of Israel and killed him. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning Till the appointed time, from Dan to Bathsheba, 70,000 men of the people died. Who? 70,000 people died due to the infection, the pandemic. And when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the stretching floor of Arauna, the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking the people and said, Surely I have sinned, I have done wickedly. But this chief, the citizen, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. Wow, what a story. It's not fun. The first one, adultery. He repented, his son died. The second one, he made a census. He said, let's count the number of people in this city. He commanded his commander, Joab, to do it. And Joab knew in his heart, this is not right. I want to explain to you why it was not right to count the number. Let me explain to you. Number one, okay, I try to interpret the Bible, why God was so upset with David and the children of Israel. Number one, when you try to find the numbers, how many people come to your care group? How many people follow you? How much money you make in the church or in the ministry? How many people follow you? If you try to find the numbers, it means that, number one, you trust in number. You don't trust God. You trust in your own number, that I'm so successful. You see how many people follow me. See how many people like me. So you measure your success by 
looking at the numbers of people who follow you, or looking at the money you have, or the reputation you have. Your success is not about numbers. Your success is about you do what God say and get it done. You remember when Jesus died on the cross? Only one left at the bottom, at the foot of the cross. John left. The rest all ran away. Jesus tried to teach us that he did not look at the number. He finished what God the Father called him to do. I remind myself all the time as a pastor, what I am doing here. I want more people to follow me. I want number. No, I am doing what he calls me to do. And if people don't like me and leave the church, it's their business. I have to do what God tells me to do. It's not about number. So number means you put confidence in your own success, in the numbers, in the amount of people who give money to you, support you. That is sin. Number two, counting the number is a sign of pride. Oh, King David tried to flatter himself, tried to boast about himself, and he wanted to put in the history of the Jews of Israel that, you see, one king, his name is David. Wow, he has a lot of followers, 800,000 on Israel, 500,000 on Judah's side, all together with women and kids, calculate about 5 million people under his kingship. I am a successful king. Look at my name. Is the pride. Counting the number is the pride to show that this is my success. Number three, counting the number means I claim these people belong to me. Actually, people belong to God. It's not our business to count the number because they belong to God, not belong to you. God is in the business of counting, not me. I'm not going to count how many people in this church, how many people are going to follow me. I don't count. I don't care. I just do what God tells me to do. I trust God. I don't trust in numbers. And I don't want to boast about my number because I have seen so many mega churches and just collapse in one day, gone. Because they are trying to build their own kingdom. I don't want to build my own kingdom. I want to obey God. Amen? One more thing. Counting number in the country by the government can be used in an unethical way to control people, to get taxes for more power, financial power. It's a power struggle. I want to tell you that this country is so big. It's about the pride. It's about military drafting people in. So it can be used in a very unethical, ungodly way. This is why census for that David commanded to do was wrong or a sin in the eyes of God. I don't know the real reason. This is just try to analyze the scripture. That David sinned against God may be lack of confidence in God and put confidence in, in man or to pry or three count people to be his people. Whatever, David sinned against God. He did not have the right heart at that time. Now the next question. But, pastor, it's not fair that David sinned against God, but the children of Israel were punished as well. Wow, 70,000 people died of plagues. This is not fair. Let me read one more time. Verse 1. Go back to 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Actually, the Bible says that this sin is not only with David. The children of Israel, the citizens of Israel at that time also sinned against God. The Bible did not tell us exactly what kind of sin, but I guess the sin of pride. 
Look at us, Israel. We won every battle. So many countries sent tribute to us. Wow, we're so rich now. We're so powerful. We're so successful. We're so big, so great. Oh, look at us. Maybe I don't know. I just try to guess what kind of sin the children of Israel committed before King David make a wrong decision. Maybe both David and the citizen of Israel have the same mindset. Look at us, my brother and sister. Pride lead to destruction. No matter how rich, how successful you are, be humble. Be thankful to God, and realize that everything that come to your hand came from the Lord. Don't boast about yourself. Don't try to look for reputation, acceptance of man. Don't try to find more people to follow me. That is pride, and God hates pride. God, there are six, seven things in the Book of Proverbs that God hates. And one of them is a prideful look. We should not be prideful. We should be humble all the days of our life. Amen. Oh, I don't see smile that much today. Now, let me explain another thing. Pastor, sound like David sin, but why the rest of the people suffer too? We are living in a society called. Individualism, which means what I do is my business. What you do is your business. There is no connection there. That is the world view. But the biblical view is we are interconnected. Let me read the scripture: First Corinthians chapter twelve, verses twenty-five to twenty-seven. So that there should be no division in the body. But that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. I like what Dr. Martin Luther King say. He said this way. Let me read his writing. In justice, anywhere. Is a threat or a damage to justice everywhere. This is the biblical vision. Your decision, your action, will impact people around you, either for good or for bad. If you make the right choice. Your wife, your kids, your grandkids shall be blessed. If you make bad choices, they will be impacted. So make sure you have connection with people around you. You should be the brother's keeper. You should not be the brother's destroyer by sinning against God. I learned this principle when I was a young believer. And I decided, 40 years ago, I'm gonna be a godly husband. I'm gonna be a godly pastor. I will not do any stupid thing. Will not make bad decisions because my bad decision will impact my wife and my kids and my grandkids. As a pastor of this church. I am a doorkeeper of this church. I will not let sin and demon to come into this church to destroy you, to kill you. I notice that the church that the pastor start to sin, people start to get problem, bankrupt or whatever sickness because demon start to come in. You need to be brother keeper. You need to know that your action will impact people around you. You cannot avoid it. Amen. Wow. Husband in this room, make sure you are a godly man. Don't sin against God, because 
your sin gonna have negative impact on your wife and your kids. Then that is the principle of God. Repent as soon as possible. Not worth it to cheat God, to do bad things. Repent ASAP. Be like King David. When you know and you know you are against the Bible, you do wrong thing. Repent and stop it. If you love your spouse and you love your kids and you love your grandchildren, do you love your wife, husband? Oh, I don't hear anything. Do you love your wife? Do you love your kids? Do you love your husband? Oh, woman louder. Okay. You may say, I'm going to try to finish here. You may say that, Pastor, our God is unfair. David sinned against God, but 70,000 people died due to the plague. It's unfair. I want to tell you right now, you say that, you want God to be fair? Sure. If God is fair to me, completely fair without love, without mercy, I would have been in hell today. But God is merciful. He is merciful to you, but eventually it's going to come to an end and say, stop. Stop sinning because I'm going to punish you now if you don't stop. You need to understand this. God's, our anger is different from God's anger. Our anger is to destroy, to revenge. But God's anger is about his, listen carefully, I want to say this sentence in English. God's anger is about his passion to set things right so that you will be ready to meet Jesus on the last day. So to set things right, he needs to spank you and stop you from sinning so that one day when you see Jesus, you will not be sent to hell because you repent. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 to 10 say, And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those who love. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by, his fa- by its father, if God does not discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and you are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, should not we co- submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever. Actually, I have a teaching that I haven't taught in this church called How God Disciplined Us. Do you want to hear? Yes. Oh, okay. Maybe next week or maybe after the camp. For our early fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they know how, but God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share His in His holiness. When I and Pastor Da became a new believer, the first few years, we got disciplined by God many times. And we stop and say no more. It is is painful to be disciplined by God. Second Peter 3, 9, I read a few more scriptures and done. The Lord is not really being slow about his promise. His promise of coming back second time, give us reward. His promise of giving us victory, honor, success like King David. As some people think, no, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Sin brings destruction and death. Mark chapter 1 verse 15 the condition of being a born-again Christian, not just being a member of the church, not just singing Christian song. 
the condition of being a Christian, the time promised by God has come at last. He announced, the kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. The devil and demons believe that Jesus is the son of God too. But what is the difference between demons and Christians? True Christian, I'm not talking about normal Christian, true Christians. True Christians believe the good news that Jesus died for them and Jesus is the Lord and Savior, but not only that. True Christians repent of their sin. Repentance is the lifestyle of true Christians. I hope and I pray I will see every one of you, including those who in the internet, in heaven on the last day. Not everybody who goes to church will go to heaven, unfortunately. Not everyone who calls themselves Christians will be in heaven because not everybody repents. They just go to church to find a girlfriend, boyfriend, get a job, go through religious ceremony. I know my preaching is strong, but I think you need to hear the truth. I don't want to go around, I don't want to go around the bush and try to play a game. I want to tell you the truth. Acts chapter 2, 37 to 39, last one. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to be and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins. Turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to show that you have received forgiveness of your sin. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Repentance is so important. King David made mistake, but God still loved him and blessed him and called him a man after God's own heart. Because when David made mistake and he find out, he repented right away. All of us make mistake including Pastor Lau. I make mistake a lot. Pastor Da, no. And Pastor Da look at my face. Okay, okay. I repent. She look at my eyes and say, ah, you are having bad attitude. You say that is wrong. Actually, she corrected me this morning. I say something during breakfast. And she say, ah, oh, that is sin. Oh, okay. I want to do it. Thank God for having a godly wife to warn you off and on. Amen. How many people say from now on you love God enough to repent quickly? You really love God? Did Jesus suffer for you? Did Jesus die for you? The nail went to his hand, went to his feet. He was hung on the cross. People ridiculed him, spit on him. Do you love Jesus? I hope you love Jesus. And you love him. You trust him. You obey him. You repent quickly. You respond to his warning. You shall be like David in this generation. God will honor you, bless you, give you prosperity, success, long life, healing, breakthroughs, wisdom. Let us live a life like King David in the 21st century together. I don't know about you. I make a decision. I'm going to be like King David in the 21st century. I want God to look at my, me from heaven and say, Mom, Mom is my nickname, which means chappy. I look very chappy. Shabby, you are a man after God's own heart. I'm so pleased with you. I'm going to give you success, prosperity, long life, honor, and I will be with you all the days of your life until you leave this world at an old good age with honor and 
prosperity. That is my goal. I choose that way. I choose life. I choose blessing. I choose honor. I don't want to choose cursing, death, or problem. I choose life. So I learn from King David. We're gonna learn next time about King David. We'll continue about learning about King David, loving God and loving people. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. I know, Father, this is a difficult teaching for me to present to your people because it will not tickle their ears. They may not like it, but they need to hear the truth, and the truth shall set them free. Help us, Lord, to be humble, to trust you, to depend on you, to have confidence in you, Lord. That we will not depend on the numbers. We will not just boast about our success and try to be reputable or famous, Lord. We want keep, to give all the glory to you. We want to trust you, Lord. Lord, help us not to commit any sin. And if we make a mistake, to sin against you. Warn us, Lord, through your word, by your Holy Spirit, by Christian brother and sister, so that we can repent quickly, and we don't need to face God discipline, which is painful. We don't want to see the rot on our butt. We want to repent quickly, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray that my brother and sisters who listen to this teaching will experience what David experienced. Honor, the presence of God, success, prosperity, reputation, long good life. They will experience the good things from heaven because they love you and they love people, Lord. Help us to walk in love all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Congratulations for listening to the whole teaching, and I believe you have already paid attention to the teaching of the Word of God. The Book of Isaiah 48 verses 17 to 19 give us the promise, and I believe this promise will be fulfilled in your life. Pastor Dan, I pray that the Lord will bless you and bless your generations to come. The Bible says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea, your descendant would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains, their name would never be cut off nor destroy from before me. May the Lord bless you and your children and grandchildren to the thousand generations. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken are free from the bondage and you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace, His blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness, his favor, and you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat. And you shall have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision, the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you shall be his witness in this generation. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jehoshua Hamachim.